Hi, my name is Rafe Benley. I'm team leader with Geographic Names Victoria. I've come here today to talk to you about indigenous names and preserving culture. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge traditional owners on the land on which we're virtually meeting and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge any traditional owners who may be joining us here today. In 2019, the United Nations announced the International Year of Indigenous Languages, which offered the opportunity for Victoria to deliver a series of initiatives to promote and preserve our Aboriginal culture. These included place naming documentaries, hopefully you'll be able to see some over the next couple of days. We delivered three award-winning workshops co-designed by traditional owners. We celebrated International Mother Language Day and supported the River of Language exhibition at Melbourne Museum and the 2019 Indigenous Mapping Workshop in Perth. We had expected a three and a half day workshop in Melbourne, but COVID saw this pivot to being delivered wholly online as IMW on demand, building spatial capacity for traditional owners. Internally, we named over 120 CBD meeting rooms with traditional language so that staff can use Aboriginal words and language in their everyday interactions. The UN proclaimed an international decade of Indigenous languages from 2022 to 2032, which we're excited to see what we can further deliver in this space. If you'd like to collaborate, please get in touch. The naming rules for places in Victoria provide the rules, processes for naming roads, features and localities. Uh, Geographic Place Names Act 1998 stipulates that the naming rules must be reviewed once every five years. We are about to undertake that review and I encourage you to get involved via the state government's engage.vic platform. The Act stipulates that we must set out the process to be followed before selecting or assigning an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander name of place. So this is a vitally important document for traditional owners and those looking to use Aboriginal language. We expect to provide, provide greater clarity and we will continue to encourage and facilitate the adoption of Aboriginal language. We will work closely with traditional owners on aspects of the naming rules that relate to promoting and adopting Indigenous languages. We expect virtual engagement to go live in early December. There are various rules and procedures which need to be followed and I wanted to highlight just a few of the general principles. Linking to place, Aboriginal names have an intrinsic connection to the land and therefore offer a great opportunity to ensure a strong connection. Use of Aboriginal language is strongly encouraged subject to traditional owner approval. Dual naming offers the opportunity to recognise enduring languages through joint recognition of Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal cultures. There are 11 registered Aboriginal parties uh, in Victoria, which cover approximately two thirds of the state. These are your go-to organisations for engaging with traditional owners. GNV has been supporting state Victorian government initiatives, which include Goal 18, Aboriginal land, water and cultural rights are realised, and Goal 19, Aboriginal culture and language are supported and celebrated. So, Let's talk sustainable development goals. Geographic names cover 16 of the 17 SDGs. For example, the article, Culture at the Heart of SDGs, published by UNESCO in 2017. Culture is who we are and what shapes our identity. Drawing the connection into place names provides us all an opportunity to connect to SDGs. For example, Goal 11, making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. One of the targets calls for strengthening efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. We are doing this here in Victoria, which I've touched on, including the fascinating Budge BIM LIDAR project, which you'll hear more about tomorrow. Goal 8, decent work and economic growth. Cultural heritage that is carefully managed managed attracts tourism investment in a sustainable way involving local communities without damaging heritage areas. Engaging with communities to ensure names of a strong link to place promotes culture and could assist in economic growth of indigenous communities. 
That's it for me. Thanks for listening. I've hoped you enjoyed my presentation. And if you have any questions or would like to collaborate further, please do not hesitate to get in touch.